Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are St. Louis. Welcome to St. Louis Cardinals baseball from U.S. Cellular Field in Chicago. A short two-game road trip concludes tonight. The Cardinals won the opener here last night, 8-5, behind Michael Waka in his 11th victory. Glad you're with us. Rick Horton with Al Raboski. Waka got a lot of offensive support here last night, Al, and Lance Lynn certainly deserves more of the same. Yeah, he really does. He's been the hard luck guy that doesn't get a lot of run support. He won last Friday, the first game after the All-Star break, and I thought it was one of his best games of his career. He really is very confident in his ability right now, and he attacks the strike zone. John Danks will pitch for the White Sox against Lance Lynn here tonight. The offense last night, where did it come from? Well, it came from Matt Holliday early on. A grand slam. Then it was Mark Reynolds Later on, where will the offense come from tonight? You'll find out right here on Fox Sports Midwest.
One of the series with the White Sox, Matt Holliday with an early grand slam that gave the Cardinals a big lead. Yadier Molina with three hits, including a two RBI single that came early as well. But Matt Carpenter also, Al, had a nice night offensively. He broke an 0 for 17. He had his 29th multi-hit game. And when Carpenter hits, it seems like the entire team hits. Mike Matheny hoping the offense can continue. Game two from Chicago is coming up on Fox Sports Midwest. Make a plan to make it home. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealers for great prices on our all-new 2015 vehicles today. Beautiful Chicago, Illinois. So many great sights. Beautiful downtown skyscrape. And plenty of folks deciding to take in baseball tonight here at U.S. Cellular Field. A lot of Cardinal fans on hand. Very happy with the 8-5 Cardinal victory here last night. And we'll take a look at Mike Matheny's lineup here for game two. The same lineup as yesterday. Colton Wong will lead off and play second base, followed by Gritchick and Holiday here in the first. Peralta, Hayward, and Molina in the middle. Carpenter in that seventh spot, followed by Mark Reynolds and Steven Piscotti, who made his major league debut here last night. And another lefty for the White Sox. This time it's John Danks. John Danks, you see his numbers. Still really trying to become the pitcher he was before he had shoulder surgery. He had a rare shoulder surgery where they, instead of the top of the shoulder, they went through the armpit. Didn't do that very often, and he's lost a lot of velocity. And the first pitch is a high strike to Colton Long. Wong was 0 for 4 last night. He was hit by a pitch, scored a run. The Cardinals really hit the ball well here yesterday, and there's a long, hard foul ball off the facing of the upper deck, and Wong way out in front of that delivery. And his fastball, he's only touches right around 90, maybe possibly 91, and he used to be really more of a thrower. Now he's trying to kind of live without that good velocity. And one of the things that Cooper, the pitching coach here, is trying to get him to do is go back to his curveball. So we'll see if that's a pitch he uses tonight. There's the curveball. Broken bat. Gets an out with it. 
as Abreu takes care of Wong, and we're underway here in Chicago. Hyundai pitch arsenal of the left-hander. You talked about that curveball. We just saw it, and the four-seamer changeup, cutter, and sinker. And, and I think these numbers are going to be a little skewed because he's trying to really bring back that curveball. Last time out, he threw six shutout innings, and uh, you know if he's throwing that changeup and it gets up, it gets hit very hard. So he's got to be very perfect with his fastball. He's got to keep the changeup down, and now. Reinventing the curveball in his arsenal is a pitch that maybe the Cardinal hitters are not that aware of. Facing Randall Gritchick. First start for Danks against the Cardinals, so they don't know a lot about him. Johnny Peralta's had a lot of experience from his American League days. I'm sure he's passed on some wisdom. But Gritchick has been a player out that has been. Boy, when he's hot, he's hot, and when he's not, he's not. Yeah, I mean, he's just a young kid. He's 23 years of age. He's still going through it. Johnny, you know, has hit some home runs, but not a high average against Danks. And you can see kind of Danks, you know, really is trying to find that his mechanics. You know, he'll fall off to the third base side, and a lot of times his arm is dragging. Good off speed pitch for strikeout for Danks. And we'll take a look at the Dobbs Tyron Auto Center's defense behind Danks. In the outfield from left to right, it's the veteran Melky Cabrera, Adam Eaton, and Avi Sail Garcia in right. He's got plenty of speed. Ramirez and Saladino has been a good pickup for the White Sox on the left side. Sanchez and Abreu, their best player on the right side, and Tyler Flowers, who played. <laughs> Very well against the Cardinals in St. Louis behind the plate tonight. I, I thought they were polishing his name for Cooperstown in that series. <laughs> Matt Holiday. Good night last night for Matt. Two for four on base three times. The grand slam in the fourth inning, the difference in the game. Just nice to have him back. Line drive base hit over the head of the shortstop Ramirez. So the Cardinals get their first hit. We'll watch this. Look at where the target is. Set down there and he delivered it. But we know Holiday is such a good low ball hitter. He just foiled that attack with the pitch out of the strike zone, but the line drive in the record books. Missouri Lottery Fox Tracks brought us that last delivery. And in steps Johnny Peralta. You mentioned a lot of at bats against Danks, but a low average. Fouls that one back. Hitting just 224 against Danks and nearly 50 plate appearances. Now that, I would say, Al, statistically relevant. Yes. And a lot of times when you see less than 10 at bats, it really doesn't say much. But when you get to round 50, also saw his hit two home runs against him. Interesting question now. What is a number where you'd say it is statistically relevant? Kind of been asking people that lately. You say you're you know you're two for four, you'd say big deal. The pitcher may have hung a right. couple of pitches. Right. And, 50 certainly is so somewhere between 4 and 50 is the right answer. I'm not sure what it is. I'd have to say you got to get over 20. Yeah. I think that's fair. 20 to 25. And then then you got to look at it. how many of those were pre-surgery, how many yeah. were post-surgery recently? Yes. Um, what has he done? You know, the last 10 or 15 at bats. Hard hit to left, sinking line drive, another base hit. So two, two out singles for St. Louis. He went down to get this one. Well, I think some of it just happens to be. You see, there's the curveball, and it's down, but it seemed like it had a big arc in it. Yeah. And you know, it's just because it's down doesn't mean it wasn't a hanger.
Jason Hayward might say one of the hottest Cardinal bats right now. The average up to 287. Been climbing that hill, hasn't he? Had seven hits in a row over the weekend. And he's done a nice job of hitting left handed pitching. Cardinals certainly seeing a lot of left handed pitching playing the White Sox. Four of their five starters left handed. And the Cardinals have seen all four in the home and away series. The thing about that average is still the highest average of any of the Cardinals against left handed pitching. Just under 300. But, you know, Starting to have a significant decline as the more he's seen them. Again, out in front, Hayward. It's interesting you're discussing the mechanical adjustments that they're working on with Danks, but he has such simple mechanics well, that's in what one way done. too, which is which is kind of interesting. Well, because they've simplified it this year, and uh, almost. You see, really, no wasted motion. There's Coop with it from Herm. Herm Schneider, dear friend. Hayward checks his swing. Hermie's been a trainer for a very long time. Went to spring training in the White Sox, and that's where I met Herm, and very, very well respected. 37 years as a major league trainer started out with the Yankees was there just for a short time 37 years out he's seen a lot in the dirt sure he's seen a bunch he wish he could forget too <laughs> yeah. so a full count the runners will be moving that'll be an advantage to perhaps scoring holiday who is not running at 100% you really have to think you need a double right now to score a holiday. And that's not a criticism, it's no. just a fact. They're off, and a swing and a miss as Hayward comes up empty. Asked if that was a strike. Two strikeouts in the inning. Run her away in the Windy City. John Danks and Lance Lynn, and here's the White Sox lineup to face Lance Lynn. It'll be Eaton Saladino, who's swinging a very hot bat. He has a seven-game hitting streak, followed by Abreu and Cabrera. Garcia, LaRoche, Ramirez, Flowers, and Sanchez. A lineup that's really had a hard time scoring runs, and Lance Lynn has pitched very well this season. Yeah, he very easily he could uh, have several more victories as he gets the fifth least amount of run support in the National League. Just, uh, pitch much better at home than on the road, but so have the Cardinals have played much better at home than on the road. But, you know, I thought his last outing, he was really spectacular. He command, he just attacked the strike zone, 
and he can make his fastball do a lot of different things. 18th start of the season for Lynn. Third time he started against these White Sox. Here's his first delivery, just missing the outside corner ball one. Adam Eaton. Walked three times here last night. The Cardinals had a hard time throwing him a strike and really, really runs well. Kind of a triples machine, has seven triples this year, and he had 10 a year ago. Lance falling behind the plate here, up behind in the count. Both of them identical, so you kind of think about your mechanics a little bit, dial it back into the strike zone. Make an adjustment, and he did. That's it. We say that a lot, Al, but that really is the game, isn't it? Making adjustments? Well, you know the difference because as a starter, you can do a lot of things. But as a reliever, you really have to be your own pitching coach. You, know, you don't have the opportunity to, to, to have somebody run out there and remind you of certain things. You have to know your mechanics well enough that if the ball is going a certain direction, how to get it back into the strike zone. Mm -hmm. It's easier said than done, isn't it? It really is. And then to take it from the bullpen mound to the game mound is a, is another tricky thing. Because your adrenaline's a little bit higher right where Lynn is right now. Derek Willequist has seen his staff pitch very, very well this season. Overall 2.68 ERA. And Lynn throws a strike on that 3-2 delivery and results in an out. Let's take a look at the Hyundai pitch arsenal of Lance Lynn. See the numbers right there, but you know, if you add the four seam and the sinker and then the cutter on top of it, you see that he's throwing well over 80% are fastballs. But he can throw his what would be classified as a fastball anywhere from say 87 to about 94. And each one of them does a little bit different. Different movement, different location. Sure. You can make the same fastball more than one pitch just by throwing it different quadrants. Ground ball up the middle. Peralta has it off balance throw. And he gets Saladino, who runs well. Nice play by Peralta. You mentioned yesterday only three errors for Johnny anchoring the middle of the defense. Peralta and Wong in the middle, Carpenter and Reynolds at the corners, and a very young Cardinals outfield. Maybe the outfield of the future. Piscotti, Gritchick, and Hayward from left to right. Yadier Molina, seven times he has won that gold glove behind the plate. Peralta, we mentioned it many times, Al has been steady. Very steady. And then you add his offense. He is really shining his second second year here with the Cardinals. We're seeing him play some great baseball. Jose Abreu, his second year in the big leagues. 28 years of age after coming over from Cuba. 36 home runs a year ago as a rookie. American League Rookie of the Year. And 29 of those 36 home runs at the All Star break. He has been dealing with a finger issue. And part of the thing, they feel like the second year, the American League's kind of got a little read on him. And they found a way to get him out. He has to make an adjustment. You can imagine him being a case out. Rookie comes up and they say, well, let's just pitch to him and see what he's got. Second yeah. year they say, hey, let's not pitch to this guy. <laughs> let's get the other guys uh, out and we'll work very carefully to a brave. Jammed a bit. Muscles it in the center field. There's Gritchett. Nice inning for Lance Lynn. Plenty of Cardinal fans on hand. Hoping for more offense, just like last night. No score through one.
Roboski's Toyota keys to the game. Uh, one thing the right handers have to really do some damage today in the first inning they we had two for three but uh, right hand batters are hitting 315 with 12 of the 14 home runs that he's allowed and watch out for the curveball like I said it's a relatively new that he's brought that pitch back and the Cardinals may not be aware of it. Yadier Molina takes ball one. Yadi again with a good day yesterday. Three hits, a couple of RBIs. Fly ball to right. That's Garcia. And out number one. Banks can give up some home runs. You look at his numbers in his career. He's given up 14 to lead the staff this year. We certainly saw some home runs here last night. The wind has been kind of swirling out since batting practice. Currently, looks like it's blowing straight in, but we saw some moments here last night where the ball was flying. And we had two from each club that hit home runs. Of course, the Cardinals had a solo shot and a grand slam. Carpenter had his 29th multi hit game, moving down to the seventh spot. and. Still maintain once you know, Carpenter's really the catalyst to this offense. When he starts hitting, it just seems like everyone else relaxes and bowls. And it's a great to have all of it back. Hard to score runs without guys on base. I think anybody who's watched the Cardinals this year would, would be able to answer the question who has the highest on base percentage of all Cardinals? And they'd say Matt Holiday. Pretty obvious. But I think you might get some people when you'd say who has the second highest on base percentage of all Cardinals and he's at the plate right now. And he's not having his typical year exactly. that we're accustomed to but. You know, he got off to the great start. And about the last. Six to eight weeks he's uh, struggled. Bounces out to Abreu. Well, Danks is making $15 million a year and really he's, he's a, a number five starter. Had that shoulder surgery and, and during the 2012 season and really trying to come back from it. You know, the first thing you hear when you hear shoulder surgery, I think elbow surgery, you say, well, that's going to get fixed and they'll be better. Shoulder, you kind of have a reaction of, well, maybe yes, maybe no. And it was a kind of a combination of the rotator cuff and bicep. Shift on for Reynolds, who takes ball one on the changeup. Ricky, you have any shoulder any surgeries? I had elbow surgery, one of them. Tommy John or no? Nope. Different type. Bone chips. Oh, those are nothing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> easy for me to say. Yeah, right? that's not exactly what I said to Dr. Job when I woke up. <laughs> kind of in some pain. I had a spur and chips and you yeah. Know, a couple of old rusty nails in there, I think. All I know is it hurt. Popped up behind home plate. And the play is made by Flowers. A one, two, three inning for Danks.
reporting with Al Roboski. We also have Jim Hayes along with us. And, Jim, you have more on the Cardinals third baseman, Matt Carpenter. Yeah, I had a chance to talk to Matt about his recent offensive struggles. Still kind of shocking when you see his batting average still in the 250s. As you guys pointed out, did have two hits last night as Mike dropped him down to number seven to take some of the pressure off Matt. Mike says Carpenter puts too much pressure on himself. Carpenter disputes that. He told me there's no question that he wears it when he doesn't perform, but he says he's always been that way, and he says most players do the same thing. But he says it doesn't affect his confidence. As he told me, I'm confident that I'm a good hitter, and I'm confident at the end of the year the numbers will be there. Rick, I believe as do I Jim but I've got to follow up on that word pressure because I saw you actually trying to get that conversation with Matt Carpenter and I saw you under some pressure. Yeah I was just trying to do a little journalism and suddenly I'm surrounded by Matt Holiday giving me grief grief Mike Matheny behind me giving me grief and then Jason Hayward joined in I suddenly felt really really small and thank you to you and uh, Al because not that you could have done anything anyway but you just sat there and left me <laughs> hanging. That's what you did. I was wondering we, if we you were rooting. That. We were rooting for the other guys. <laughs> Journalism was done, though. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that. But boy, they just—they they did. They just surrounded you and wanted to make sure that you knew what you were doing there. I guess as Cabrera strikes out. But Jim, as always, it's—it's it's good to get uh, your reports uh, from the Cardinals dugout from the clubhouse and and I wanted to follow up on a couple of other guys on the just on the injury list. Jim, you know, this team has really done so well. Seven guys on the disabled list, and really a terrific job of what the Cardinals have been able to do to maintain despite all the injuries. No question about it. And, you know, when they call a guy up from uh, Memphis, even if it's short term, they get a little traction. They live by that next man up philosophy, and it's worked. And, you know, John Mazalock calls them internal options. And to this point, the internal options have worked pretty well. That doesn't mean they won't make some kind of move before the trade deadline but you're right the Cardinals have managed to navigate around some key key injuries and a lot of them. Thanks Jim and Al I'll follow up with you on that as we saw Steven Piscotti get called up we've seen Tim Cooney make an impact here and really has been kind of a healthy thing for an organization to provide some answers from within 15 players have come up from Memphis and they've all made contributions. I think the other thing is I was Talking with some of the guys of Scotty and, and talking about the young kids that got called up to replace these guys, you know, from say from double A up to triple A. He said they all played well down there too. But it does take a toll eventually. They were about seven or eight games over 500 at Memphis and I mean, I got swept in a series, but I mean, that's remarkable just how well Memphis has done. Taking how frequently we have taken players from them. Love their manager. Mike Schilt does a terrific job. Uh, Sail Garcia is at the plate, 24 year old right fielder, formerly a Detroit Tiger. He got big league action at a very young age. Actually participated in the playoffs with the Tigers. And this guy has a nice future at 270 this year and he waves at that pitch and another strikeout back to back strikeouts for Lance Lynn here in the second. It's now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag MW data strong fan and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. Really is a very comfortable night here in Chicago. Last night was just like this. Fans really enjoying being at the ballpark. We have a nice crowd here. Plenty of plenty of red in the stands. With the idea that the White Sox are very pleased with uh, all the visiting fans that have come up here. It's like Wrigley Field. We see a tremendous amount of red there, but not that often you get to see the Sox. One thing I learned living in Chicago for a short period of time, you're either a north sider or a south side. Hard to root for both teams here.
know it's very similar to New York. Yankee fan, Met fan, depending on what part of New York you live in, and certainly true here in Chicago. And they haven't had a lot to root for lately. I saw a little quote in the paper today. You know, somebody, a Sox fan, said, "You know, we root for two teams. We root for the Sox and anybody playing the Cubs." Understood. Pass ball outside to Adam LaRoche. LaRoche. Certainly a power potential 35 year old journeyman in some ways, but he's put together some nice seasons. Two times he hit. Actually, four times 25 home runs and twice over 100 RBIs. That one is sky high to center field. And Gritchick one hands it. Good inning for Lance Lynn. Well, maybe it'll be about pitching again tonight. Will score six. Any size drink is just 50 cents the next day. Coffee, fountain, or frozen. When they score, you pour at your nearest on the run. You earned it. Stephen Piscotti got his first major league hit here last night. Second day in the big leagues and facing a left hander, Danks paints that changeup on the outside corner for strike one. Big Piscotti and then the top of the order, Colton Wong and Gritchen. Scotty getting his first hit yesterday. Also made his first error in left field. Scored his first run. Thanks getting that outside corner in those first two deliveries. Yeah, and I talked to Piscotti too. It's about the fourth inning he started uh, breathing. But, uh, <laughs> Which helps. Oh, yeah, it does. Line drive, but it's handled by the shortstop. Ramirez. Has very good hands and makes a nice play there. Also nice that piscotti has got quite a fans uh, club here. He's got his mom and dad, his grandfather, a couple brothers, an uncle, some uh, high school friends, and so they're going to make their trip down to St. Louis also. Hit that ball right on the nose, and like you said. Alexi Ramirez is an outstanding defensive player. Not that that was the hardest ball that I probably have to deal with today, but still a nice sinking line drive we made play. You mentioned it earlier, Al, but you think about the three batters for the Cardinals this inning: Piscotti, Wong, and Grichik, and you think about their age. I mentioned the outfield earlier, but when, when you look at these three guys back to back to back, you're talking about a 24-year-old Piscotti. Colton Long's just 24. Randall Grichik 23. Three. You got a team that's winning with young players who are making big contributions. And like I said, even the guy that's been around a long time, Hayward's just 25. 
Seems like he's older than that, doesn't he? Yeah. Here's just 24 year old. Right? You had Walker to that, Rosenthal okay. to that. Yeah, well, Walker turned 24. He's still 23. Of the victor here last night. Not his best game, but good enough to win. He did strike out eight. He gave up four hits in five innings. So to say that it was a terrible game, that's not a really a true statement either. He just gave up those two home runs in the fifth inning when he just lost his command and it turned into a five run outing for him. 100 pitches through five. He was so good the first three. Swing and a miss. He threw that one by Colton Long, which shows you you don't have to throw 98 to throw it past somebody. Ball up there, you know, more of a low ball hitter. Colton at times looks like he gets into a pull mood mode where he wants to just jerk everything. Richard struck out the first time, but I would think he would have some success against it. I was I would think so too. Yeah. Richard's going to be the kind of player that will kind of maybe look bad one at bat. Talked about it being streaky, but boy, dangerous at bat late in the game, no matter what kind of game he's having. Oh, he's going to have some games where he's going to look bad all four, you know, four or five times in, at bat, but. He can also turn around and win you a ball game with his glove. And there'll be other times where he's going to look like he can't get him out. The guys that have the extraordinary power, you just know that if the pitcher makes a mistake and hangs it, you could be in trouble. He didn't hang that one. Four strikeouts through three for John Banks. One of them, Colt Wong on the high heater. No score in Chicago. For live baseball, in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or for your tablet. Lance Lynn facing the bottom of the order for the White Sox. That'll be Alexei Ramirez, Tyler Flowers, and Carlos Sanchez. Ramirez having an off year offensively so far at 224. Had a nice career. Rounds that one foul. 
Ramirez liked their best player Abreu from Cuba. And he runs well. He's a guy you want to keep off the base pass. Ten stolen bases. Since uh, getting here. Again, part of the work of Derek Lilliquist. Finding out how he can get into his zone, get a repeatable delivery. And a ground ball to Peralta. Takes care of his counterpart. And a little bit of the proof in the pudding for Lance Lynn is our BJC difference maker that the strikeouts are up as a percentage and the walks are down 2015 striking out 25.7 percent you see how he's increased that over the years and the walk percentage much better and, and I think he also has done it by not trying to strike people out you know when you're trying to strike everybody out you're going to usually walk a bunch of people because you're trying to be too fine but when all of a sudden you kind of figure it out when you're trying to get the pitch to contact you know, you're more in the strike zone but you're making, uh, you know, you have better command and put it where you want it. This guy that you just don't ever worry about, you know, pitch count where they're so big and strong. That he could throw like the old days, 130 pitches if they ever let him. I wonder if you ever played with a left-hander, Buddy Schultz. Oh, sure. With the Cardinals yeah. lefty. He was down on a rehab assignment down in. Little Rock, he got all the pitchers together and he said, I want to tell you something really important. And he said, You can't strike out a batter until you have two strikes on him. We thought, boy, there's some big league wisdom for us. <laughs> but it really, yeah. he really was making a point that if you're just trying to get swings and misses all the time, you're going to wear yourself out. Wait till you've got an opportunity to put him away and then come up with him. Like that. Good strikeout for Lance, and you know, you talk about guys. Look at the ball run. It ran all the way across the strike zone. But you talk to a Bob Gibson, you know, a Tom Seaver, guys that gave up. They gave up a lot of home runs at times, but they were so solo shots because they take a guy at the bottom of the order and say, hit the ball. I drive just over the head of Cold Wong. Good effort there. And that's the White Sox first hit. Carlos Sanchez, the switch hitter. There you are. You know, you got the ninth place hitter, and you say hit the ball. Well, every now and then they're gonna hit it right on the nose, but well, what, what happened if that ball was line drive a few inches lower and Colt Wong catches it? It'd be a one pitch out that would keep Lance Lynn in the game longer. So it's, it's when you get guys on base and you get in trouble is when all of a sudden you should try to, with two strikes, get the strike out. This is trouble into the left field corner. Piscotti runs it down, gets it in very quickly, so they're not able to score Carlos Sanchez. Boy, Piscotti really ran that ball down quickly, got it out of his hand quickly into the infield. The throw kind of short hopped the cutoff man, but good work by Piscotti. Remember, he signed as a third baseman, so they moved him to the outfield because he had a strong throwing arm. But see right there, he just wanted to get it back into the infield as quick as possible. He's all the way on the warning track, and that stopped Super Joe McEwing, stopped the runner at third base. I don't think he had a chance of scoring. It should have run into an out if the Cardinals executed the relay throw, which we think they would have. RBI opportunity for Tyler Saladino. 
He has a seven game hitting streak and he takes strike one. He's only played eight games in the big leagues and he has a seven game. So hitting I'll streak. help you with his path. He, he was hitless in his first game. There you go. And then that's how that happens. Wow, you are on it tonight, Al, as usual. You went to Virginia. I got to help you. Vision three school. Easy. We may have some viewers that went there too. You may not just be sending me. I'll just let you know. By the way, it's a line eye night at the ballpark here. Well, trust me, I was only trying to offend you. <laughs> offend you. I understand. <laughs> not anybody else. We have plenty of people here from the University of Illinois. Enjoying this ball game. One and one the count to Saladino. And that pitch is high, two and one. Saladino has really been a late bloomer. Early minor league years, he was a 220, 230, 240 hitter or so in the minor leagues and really broke out a year ago, hit 310 in AAA. And next thing you know, he's in the big leagues at 26. One of the exceptions to one of George Kissel's beliefs. They don't hit in the, in the minor leagues, you know, almost when you first start, you're not going to hit. But there are exceptions to it. Well, he's figured something out. Getting 355 in his young big league career. And he's ahead in the count here. He's had back to back home run games. First one was Sunday. Danny Duffy of the Royals, and then last night. But now it's a time for Lance Linda to go for that strike. Talk about a Tom Seaver, or Bob Gibson, you know. They just go along and let people hit it, try and get themselves out. But then if they got in a situation like this, a couple guys in scoring position, all of a sudden there's another foot or two on the fastball. The sharpness to a breaking ball was that much uh, greater. They weren't going to let you score. The 3 2 fouled off. Then could use a strikeout here. He has three in the early going. Back to back hits for the White Sox with two outs and the Cardinals have been so good so far this year at stranding runners. Another opportunity here for Lance. He has his sign and the pitch. Pop foul. We'll do it again. Story of this Cardinal team in 2013, the national championship season, was hitting with runners in scoring position. One of the stories this year is the Cardinals pitching with runners in scoring position. It's been outstanding. 230 was the bat batting average as a team for the year. Cardinal hitters with runners in scoring position. This year, the pitching has just been, as you said, historic. And it's a call third strike. And Lance Lynn adds to his strikeout total. Cardinals so good with runners in scoring position. No score through three.
Evans. And it's time for our Kia in the driver's seat. Take a look at the Cardinals opponents average with two outs and runners in his in scoring position really hit an historic number Al 165 batting average. Really been a strong point for this Cardinal ball club in 2015. Fly ball to left. One pitch one out. Still a long way to go but wouldn't it be amazing if they can continue this. Every single day, you know, the Cardinals are getting such quality pitching. You, know, you really do take the field thinking you're going to have another victory. And they feed off each other. You know, one guy does well, and this guy wants to not be the weak link, so they kind of uh, use it as motivation. Talk all the time about how hitting is contagious. Yeah. So it's pitching and defense for that matter. Another fly ball. I guess they're contagious too. Two outs here in the fourth. Saturday, it's an MLB doubleheader starting with the Athletics taking on the Giants. Then at 6 o'clock, the Braves will battle the Cardinals in a game you can only see on Fox Sports 1. Coverage begins at 3 o'clock. Only on Fox Sports 1, and it's also streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Saw the Montreal Expos in 84 on that graphic. The Cardinals are a little bit better than them with pitching and two outs. Runners in scoring position. Opponents batting average. I'm trying to think of the 84 Expos. Right. And I'm sure many of our viewers are saying, who are the Montreal Expos? <laughs> But who were they in 1984 to be so good? Yeah, the Steve Rogers was not. Can't imagine he still was pitching there. He was in. Heyday was in the 70s. I believe he may have been. Al. 84. Yeah, I think so. Fly ball to left. This is going to be a difficult play, but it's made over the shoulder by the slick fielding Saladino. We'll think about the Expos during the break. No score. Middle of the order for the White Sox, and with more on the Cardinals rookie Stephen Piscotty, let's go back to Jim Hayes. Jim, where are you? Yeah, Rick. Uh, obviously, a, a huge moment for Piscotty getting his first big league hit. He told me he got so many texts and calls from people congratulating him. He says he was overwhelmed by it, friends and family nonstop. Now, it wasn't the cleanest hit, as it did kick off the third baseman. But Piscotty told me everyone was positive about it. Everyone except his former teammate Ed Easley. 
Ed, according to Stephen, left him a voicemail saying that he thought he had a base hit when he grounded to third in his very first big league at bat, but they ruled in an error. Easley told him, if that was an error, so was yours, Piscotti. Stephen said that Easley pretended to be mad, but Rick, he really wasn't because they're good friends and they talked on the phone person to person after that. But at first, he said he didn't know what to make of it. That's a great point. I remember Ed Easley's ground ball in that error and kind of that confusing moment. And of course, Stephen Piscotti's going to remember that Al as years go on as uh, line drive. It doesn't matter. He's going to get plenty of hits after it. It's nice to see. So we'll let you judge. Is this a hit? Or is this an error? We're not asking you, Ed Easley. We're just asking everybody else. Boom. Must be a hit. That's out. The ball. And in the possession of Steven Piscott. Congratulations. I'm wondering, Al, if some of those texts were meant to Piscotti to, to wish you a happy birthday, too, because I know I, I think you got more text yesterday than Piscotti did. Uh, I, hope, uh, I hope he had more. <laughs> Lance Lynn keeps rolling along. Tires Cabrera, Nano face Abisail Garcia. Another thing I like about Lance Lynn and his makeup is there's a lot of guys that'd be complaining. You know, can't you get me any runs? Do this, do that. Well, he just goes about his business and worries about what he can control. It is odd that every year there seems to be one guy that gets a ton of runs and one guy that gets very few. And he's been on the receiving end of a lot of them himself. But Walk is getting the runs this year. But prior to yesterday, you know, he had a sub three ERA, so he didn't need them either. Makes me think of our dear friend, the late Bob Forsh, who. Anytime somebody would say, hey, some, that guy just seems to get all the runs. Some guys get all the runs. That was kind of an expression. And Bob's response always was, some guys need them. <laughs> One of his favorite lines. His other line that I loved was, I throw just as hard as Nolan Ryan. It just doesn't get there as fast. Another strikeout for Lance Lynn. That's five. Lance Lynn matching Danks. Eight zeros on the board. On to the fifth.
Thanks, guys. Good idea. Let's get Lance Lynn some runs here at the top of the fifth inning. It'll be Molina, Carpenter, and Reynolds to face the lefty five and eight. John Dank. His first pitch is high. And now for all of our viewers who are big 1984 Montreal Expo fans, and I'm talking to both of them. We did do some crack research here and found out that the starters that year were Dan Schatzetter, Charlie Lee, Bryn Smith, the former Cardinal, Bill Gullickson, and Steve Rogers. Jeff Reardon was the closer that year, so that answers the question. So for both of those fans, we followed up. Very good. Two and one the count on Molina. Flew out to right field in the second. Late swing. Elena had a couple of swings like that last night, Al. It almost just seemed as if the ball was by him by the time he was yeah, let go. Kind of up and in a little bit. Good swing there, up the middle. Tough play, and it's not made by Sanchez. Third hit for the Cardinals. Gives us a chance to tell you what's on tap. Brought to you by Budweiser. Final interleague game of the season for the Cardinals is tomorrow. Young and Lackey, the starters. Coverage begins at 5.30. Make sure you see that. 5.30 on Fox Sports Midwest. Back in the year that he's had. Think of the influence he has on some of the younger pitchers too. Pitching at home, he's had great success, but pitched better this year than he did at any point last year. Looks like he wants a contract for next year. Not a bad idea. Late swing, strike one on Carpenter. Cardinals looting, losing Adam Wainwright. Jaime Garcia has been effective when he's been available, hoping to see him come back. But you've got some issues in a couple of issues in the rotation, but certainly some issues in the bullpen. Jordan Walden, I think, is a big missing piece. But guys have just stepped in, and as Jim Hayes and you both said earlier, really done a nice job of filling in. Good slider there. I had a conversation with Matt Belisle. He's on the disabled list, and. I asked him first day, do you have a little setback? And he didn't want to classify it that, but they really have found out where the what the issue is. And Dr. Paletta was able to uh, diagnose something, and now he's all excited because it feels like we you know what's what the issue is and what they're going to get taken care of, and, and uh, you know, so he. At least in his mind, he's starting the recovery process. And, and Al, I would guess that anybody who's had an injury, and they don't have to be a baseball player to feel that. You just want to know what it is at one point. You've got pain and you want it diagnosed and for Belial to finally understand kind of what is. And, and it's nothing real serious. It's right. something in the forearm and, and, uh, and issue. And but how do you treat what you don't know? You yeah. don't know the problem. And, and that's it. It was like, you know, we were, every time he went to try to test it, you know, it kind of started flaring up again. So now they're, at least they're, they feel in his mind that they're on the road to recovery. And that'll be another experienced arm down there to take a little pressure off some of the guys. Big hole on the right side for Matt Carpenter. Grounded out to first in the second. Takes that breaking pitch low. Good plate discipline there by the Cardinal third baseman. 21 doubles on the season for Carpenter. He has the right field line to deal with, too. They're really playing him in the right center field gap, almost daring him to pull the ball into that right field corner. And the pitch. Rounded foul. A couple of years ago, he had 55 doubles. Been sitting on 21 doubles for quite a while, but just kind of take baby steps. You got this 
first multi-hit game in quite a while yesterday. And see if we can't get him consistently being the offensive weapon that we know he is. Carpenter has an uncanny ability to have that. I don't know what what to call it other than to say it's just kind of a half swing where he doesn't really finish it. Just kind of lobs the ball. Pokes at it maybe. Just to protect when he has two strikes. And line drive caught by Sanchez. Broke his back. Almost found that hole on the right side. Out number one. Know you're talking about that half swing, and we right. talked a little bit last night about how frustrating that is to a pitcher. When you think you make a good pitch, you got to buy a guy, and all of a sudden he just flicks it, his wrist and gets a piece. Right off the end of the bat, and as you said, it broke it. Soft liner, and not able to get back to first. Just when you're going bad, you you think that every time you hit the ball around the oh nose, it's, it, you don't get rewarded. When going good, they all fall in. Now Mark Reynolds, who homered here last night. And when he hits him and gets a hold of him, I think this guy's got some serious power. Two for 11 now off of Danks, but as you mentioned, if you make a mistake, he can hurt you. So far off the line again in right field is Garcia. I just wonder whether it has to do with Danks not being a hard thrower, a guy that's not really gonna kind of blow it by you. They don't you don't expect a lot of late swings from right handers, but that is that is taking away the right center field gap right there. Really bunch in the outfield, like say way off the right field line. A lot of change ups and a lot of cutters. Reynolds jammed. Out goes Ramirez. Number two. So you've been able to get in on these right handed batters. And whether and the cutter's been a big pitch. Not so much the curveball, but the cutter. And then he throws a lot of changes. Good look at the location on our Chevy Fox tracks. And now face Piscotti. Lined out his first plate appearance and a late swing and a foul there. You wouldn't call Piscotti, you talked about it last night, classic home run hitter, but he's a guy that occasionally will run into one. No, really, prior to this year, he was truly a line drive hitter. And then they've asked him, you know, you're a big guy, you're going to get even bigger and stronger. And there's a line drive down the right field line, a long way to go for Garcia. Finally gets to it. Molina advances to third, but can go no farther. A double to right for Piscotti, and the Cardinals with two runners in scoring position all of a sudden here in the fifth inning. Well, we'll take that extra base hit. Good concentration right there, the ball down the way. Slices it. Yanni gets all the way over to third base. Piscotti's in second, so two in scoring position. We need a two out base hit. Cardinals have two base hits in the first. After two outs, they have two men on, second and third, and two outs. So key it bad here for Wong. Authenticator, you see, he just marked that first extra base hit or double for his career. That's all. That's kind of a new thing that's happened now. I think it's terrific. Yeah. I mean, now you really know that these are historic balls or memorabilia. For a ball in the dirt, blocked by Flowers. That's important when you think about a runner at third base. Breaking ball could be a pitch of choice to the left handed hitting Wong, but he's not going to want to snap it off too much. Good swing there as Wong was trying to drive that ball back up the middle. 
one and one. Banks has committed six wild pitches. Very shallow and right is Garcia who has ten assists. The center fielder Eaton has eight. They like to throw guys out at the plate. Fly ball center field. Medium depth. Eaton squeezes it. Cardinals strand two here in the fifth. They've stranded four overall. No score from Chicago. with a minimum of 50 starts over the last two years. Lance Lynn makes that list. Granky Cueto, Lynn, and Zimmerman. Tonight, Lance Lynn, a solid four innings of work. He'll face LaRoche. Ramirez and Flowers in the fifth. Adam Eaton retired Colt Wong to end the last inning and brought the baseball with him. He asked if she would say please. Very nice gesture. That was a smiley face right there. Yes, it was. Here's something to know about Lance Lynn. When he moved into the rotation in 2012, 55 career wins since 2012. It's tied for third in the National League with Adam Wainwright behind Kershaw's 58 and Bumgarner's 57. Also shows how good Adam Wainwright is and will be once again. Agreed. In some ways, Lance Lynn, I don't know if it's fair to say that. He was an all star in 2012, but in some ways, he's still kind of nationally under the radar to I, me. I think he's one of the most underrated pitchers in the game. Tried to overthrow that delivery, threw it at 94, but didn't get the location. Trying to finish off LaRoche. Struck out 96 times this year. Almost 97. The strike zone's been pretty good tonight, in my mind, and we thought it was really good last night, too. Yep. Yeah. The umpires get into a competitive groove, too. 3 2 pitch, hard hit ground ball, and that's the third baseman, Carpenter. Throws out LaRoche. Carpenter's played some second. Not too strange a feeling for him to be on the right side of the infield. No, I think that works to his advantage. You know, sometimes they'll move the shortstop over there, but why move two people out of position? 
leave Johnny on the left field side, and then take Carpenter as as you said has played second base, so move him to a familiar position. You got me thinking too about the underrated thing with Lance Land, and I'm trying to think of another pitcher in baseball that's in my mind more underrated than Lynn and I can't think of one. Kind of be fun to have a all underrated team. You always think about the overrated yeah, guys. You always maybe, hear the overrated. Maybe the guy that you hear too much and just kind of not that elite a player. But what about the all underrated team? Lance Lynn's my starter. Just I'm gonna start with that. Give you something to think about, Al, on the yeah, plane, but, but plane ride a, back to St. Louis. Part of the problem, you know, you're talking about underrated people, and you can't come. Can't think come, of them. Yeah, <laughs> can't think of them. Three-one count to Alexi Ramirez, who bounced out in the third, and that's a high chopper. And it's going to be a tough play. Let it go, maybe. And he does. Now go get it. Make sure it doesn't come back fair. That's Smart play. play. Yeah, and Lance started going in that direction. Because if it would have stayed fair, you know, and Carpenter didn't turn around and get it, or the pitcher get it, then Lexi could go right on the second. I hate that. That was the only choice he really had. If he stops it right now, it's going to be a base hit. So let it go foul, and most of the time it will. One of those situations that really, when you during batting practice or even before batting practice, you should roll some balls up and down the right first and third base lines and see if the ball will go fair or foul. Swing and a miss. Strikes out. Ramirez comes back to get him. Another strikeout for Lance Lynn. Number six. Look at the movement. And that's what we talked about Lance. You know, he throws so many fastballs, but he can make the ball do different things, move different ways, and he changes speeds off. You know, between your sinkers, your cutters, your four seamer. Thinking about that play with Carpenter reminds me of an old video of a Former big league infielder Lenny Randall on yes, the ball that was on mean. AstroTurf and it was rolling down the third baseline. He was the third baseman. He got down on his hands and knees and he blew the ball foul. He actually kind of blew on the ball as it was rolling. And I guess they had to make a rule you can't do that. They called it a base hit, as I recall. I remember the situation now. Remember they. Well, he's, was successful or not, but they did make created their story. AstroTurf infield, good riddance as far as I'm concerned. I like the game on grass. Oh, and to the count to Flowers, struck out in the third, hurt the Cardinals in St. Louis. On the 30th of June and the 1st of July, he homered in the 11th to win game one and also homered in the 9th. As the Cardinals dropped two. And we were putting the plaque in Cooperstown for. Right. Who is this guy? The 2 2. Rounded foul. Seventy four pitches. Pretty good number working in the fifth inning for Lance. And the two two swing and a miss. He gets another one. Hi, hard one. Two strikeouts in the inning for Lance Lynn. Perfect night for baseball.
For the Cardinals looking for some offense here, top of the sixth inning. It's been another pitcher's duel here tonight. We've seen so many of these. Al in 2015, and for fans of one nothing games, two to one games, this has been your year. It, it has, but it's. Uh, I don't mind seeing a little more scoring by the Cardinals. Both these offenses at times have been very low scoring and put a lot of pressure on their the pitching staffs where no margin for error. Gritchick has struck out twice. But always a dangerous at bat for Gritchick. Oh for three now is Randall Gritchick. One out for the Cardinals. Time for our AT&T U-verse rewind. Lance Lynn has been terrific. Used his fastball in and out of the strike zone. Piling up the strikeouts. A White Sox team that strikes out a lot. Doesn't walk very often. No walks. Through five innings for Lance Lynn. Has only allowed two hits. They both came in the third inning since that time. He's retired seven in a row. The four strikeouts of those seven. Thanks. Mentioned his last time out was six shutout innings, and now he's back to back starts. Very good for him. Three and zero count. A little holiday swing. He likes it. He liked it, but so does John Banks. It brings in Johnny Peralta. Is one of the Cardinals' four hits that came in the first inning. And Peralta has 107 hits on the season. Extended his hitting streak to eight games with that first inning single and is fifth in the National League in hits. How about that? Summer, quite a year. I remember also, everybody thought he was more of an offensive player, but. Cardinal metrics said he was better defensively than a lot of people thought. And he sure has proven that. First two years of his free agent contract. I just personally really like him too. Very easy to like. Always smiling. Very polite. Willing to do interviews with. Pat Parrish, Jim Hayes, whoever happens to be down in the clubhouse, and he's had plenty of opportunities to do that. Come up with a bunch of big hits also. I don't think we give our players from Dominican Republic and Venezuela, Colombia enough credit. For being willing to be on television, being interviewed about a game you just competed in in your second language, and how tough that may be for them to try to express themselves well. It's not, right. it's not easy to do. I just credit them for trying their best. Johnny has 12 game winning RBIs, it's tied for first in the major leagues with Nelson Cruz of Seattle. Twelve ties his career best. That was 2006 when he was still with Cleveland. And you know, sometimes you get a base hit in the first inning, it might end up being the game-winning hit. But we talked about how important it is what you do, seventh inning and on. 
Swing and a miss. Off speed pitch. He waves at that. Another strikeout for Danks, who's been very, very good through six. Friday, July 31st, celebrate the best trade in Cardinals history. 25,000 fans ages 16 and older will receive a one-of-a-kind Lou Brock bobblehead courtesy of Lindenwood University. The bobblehead features Brock changing out of a Cubs jersey, revealing a Cardinals uniform underneath. How about that? Tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. Lance clever with these, aren't they? No doubt about it. All season long, Al, the 85 Cardinals celebrating 30 year anniversary of that National League Championship team. And that yours, uh, Mine's coming up on the 28th. Looking forward to that. And we've got Ken Daly's coming up. I've seen uh, the, the, kind of the, the mock up of his bobblehead. And we had Jack Clark and John Tudor. It's just really been fun. Yeah. What, 15 a series of 15? I believe it's 10. Line drive over the head of Peralta in the left. No so leadoff hit. First time the White Sox have had their leadoff runner aboard. As promised earlier in the game, we have selected the Data Strong fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to. Hashtag MW Data Strong Fan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T Mobile. Sanchez has two of the three hits. The other one is represented at the plate right now, Adam Eaton. Sanchez, who has really struggled, oddly enough, from the left side in his short career at the big league level, hit 194 left handed last year. 364 right hand. And this year he's hitting under 200 for both sides. That two for two tonight. Why you play the game? Outside for a ball. Two eat. Eat double down the left field line in the third inning, and that's been the biggest threat, really the only threat for the White Sox. Sanchez had a base hit. Eaton followed with a double with two outs, and then the strikeout of Saladino. One of seven for Lance Lynn. On the outside corner, he gets the call there. One and one. This would be a tough guy to double up here. Carpenter in on the grass. Taking away the bunt. 
And the pitch. A little bit outside, two and one. it up and reluctantly nods to the answer could be an important pitch here three and one the count Sanchez the runner at first then challenging he, he does have some power I was Don't just, be surprised. Just look at that. Seven home runs. A lot of times you get a guy like this, you think he doesn't have power, and you just elevate the ball and make him hit it to center field. You can't just groove one. Will they run? Three and two. Here's the pitch. Big swing and a foul. Roger Ventura knows the reputation of Yadi and Molina, but there's certain times you just have to do it. What a time I would suspect that he would want to send that runner. You're trusting Eaton not to strike out, but you've got a strikeout pitcher in Lance Lynn. And a cannon behind the plate in Yadier Molina. Is he going again? There he goes outside for a ball. So two base runners for the White Sox here in the sixth inning. And Lance Lynn's going to have to go to work right now. Kids 15 and younger will be able to run the bases, weather permitting, following the Cardinals Royals makeup game tomorrow, July 23rd, presented by Prairie Farms. There are also two more kids run the bases opportunities during the homestand, following the Sunday, July 26th game against the Braves, and the following Sunday, August 2nd. And that Cardinals will host the Rockies on that day. Two runners aboard. Tyler Saladino at the plate. Now you need the double play. First pitch. Fouled off. If you hit the count, is the best way to get him out. After Saladino playing in his ninth. Major League game. He's hitting seven straight. So far tonight, over two. The pitch. Savino is from San Diego, but he went to Oral Roberts University. Ten draft for the White Sox. Lena flashes the sign and outside for a ball, two and one. So in a game with very few offensive opportunities, the White Sox have one here in the home half of the sixth. Swing didn't go. Three and one and is the count, making it that much tougher for Lance to get him out. But it's early, you know. It's, Saladino said he's only playing in his ninth game. This is his 33rd plate appearance, but no walks yet. It needs a double play behind in the count the three one ground ball left side it's foul. 
probably did the right thing. Go ahead and execute the play and then turn around and find out if it was fair or foul. But that would have been sweet. We needed Lenny Randall to blow that ball right. fair. The other way. Joe McEwen to help us out. Super Joe, remember, you were a Cardinal. You almost you interviewed for Mike Matheny's job. Help out the Redbirds. I'm really happy for Super Joe with oh, the success yeah. he's had, and he will be a major league manager probably someday. I agree. I believe that's inevitable. Full count. Now, what do you do with the runners? Saladino at the plate struck out his last time out. I imagine they won't run, and the pitch grounded foul again. Thinking they would run on that, but you got to think in some way. Rob Ventura might say, I wonder how much of uh, am I looking into the future that foul ball that they turned to a double play? Sanchez and Eaton, the runner. 3 2. Ground ball to shortstop. Peralta has trouble getting it out of his glove and is only able to get one. So a missed opportunity, perhaps the ball wasn't hit very hard. Peralta tried to be so quick in the transfer, he's only able to get Eaton coming into second base. You know, nobody feels worse than Johnny Peralta, but it's where Lance Lynn, and, you know, for young pitchers. You know, you see he wants to do everything, but you see he didn't get the exchange, he did hold on it, got one out, double play is still in order. But as a pitcher, you got to go out there and say, okay, I'm going to show my fielders that I can pitch around them. We're not going to let them score. We're going to get out of this inning. And boy, will that be a big lift when you take it into the dugout. See if Lynn can accomplish that. First pitch to Abreu outside for a ball. Cabrera will hit next. Abreu is flown out to center and bounced out to second. And he's also hit into 14 double plays. Number 15. In set at the belt and the pitch hard hit the left base hit. That will score Carlos Sanchez and the White Sox on the board first here tonight. One nothing. RBI base hit for Abreu. 48th RBI and that was a rocket off of his bat. Highest average, most home runs, and RBIs for the Sox, just like Johnny Peralta for the Cardinals. Pitch was down. Yeah, he turned on it. I think he was looking in that spot. Minimize the damage. That's the job That's for Lance Lynn right now. Take the mound, you're thinking you're going to throw a no hitter, give up a hit, and it's going to be a one hit. You're going to throw a shot out, get one run, and say, well, that's all they're going to get. Cabrera three times has hit 300 in the big leagues. Best year, all star season, MVP of the all star game in 2012. He hit 346 for the Giants, but also had a drug suspension. Yes. On his sixth major league team, but he can still hit. Lynn is just missing. They got the activity in the bullpen right now. Looks like Randy showed his throwing. As we're at 97 pitches. It's really not that big a deal for Lance Lynn, but. It looks like I mean, not a question whether he's going to get much beyond the sixth inning. See if he can come back on Cabrera. There's strike one. Still looking for that double play is Lance Lynn. Hard hit 
center field and a base hit down in front of Grichik. A strong throw to the plate, not in time. Two nothing White Sox. Base hit, walk, and two RBI singles this inning. And he just takes off, comes on home. Sure has to like that one. Pretty quick reaction by Saladino off the bat. At least a question about whether that ball would carry to center field or not. Well, I think you, you know, you're out there as the base runner. You can see the height. And if you were doing your job and check and see where the outfield were playing, you got a pretty good idea whether that ball was going to fall in or not. And then there's the other time people don't get a look or read. They just take off and they end up looking brilliant. <laughs> right? You take off and hope, right? Yeah, you take off and hope. Cardinal fans certainly remember the base running uh, courage, let's say, of Albert Pujols and his teammates. Like to say that Albert was invisible on the base pass. He would just run and he'd always be safe, and they couldn't figure out how. I think we had the Rex Hudlers that would run until they tapped. <laughs> he just had a hard time stop, stopping moving. For those who know Rex, understand that. There's Cabrera at first, Abreu at second. Three hits in the inning, plus a walk. Double play that was not turned. Visail Garcia at the plate. Big swing there. He wasn't trying for a base hit there for sure. Garcia has power of his own. Two and one. The count. Now two and two. Garcia just turned 24 last month. 6 4 to 40. And he still looks like he could get bigger in that body. But in some ways reminds me, just looking at the size, reminds me of Cabrera, Miguel Cabrera. He'd love to have that career. I'll say. Check swing, couldn't hold up. Mark Rippinger, our home plate umpire, rings him up. Another strikeout, that's eight now for Lance Lynn. And the third time he's gotten Garcia. There you go. There's how you can pitch up in the zone and really help your own cause with that strikeout. And that pitch up there, if you get him to swing at it, the only thing you're going to do is to swing and miss, or at best, a pop up. Both of them would have kept the runners where they are. Perhaps the last batter that Lance Lynn will see. Adam LaRoche. Two runners aboard. Fly ball center field. Richick on the move. He's at the track and he's got it. A long way from home plate, but an out. White Sox pick up two.
is able to hit a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers will donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Jason Hayward will have that opportunity. He will lead things off for St. Louis. He's 0 for 2. Water Tower, downtown Chicago. So many beautiful sites. Love the architecture. Amazing that people could drive that fast in Chicago. That's a cab driver. <laughs> yes, they can. Gotta have a horn, though. Off speed pitch, strike one to Jason Hayward. John Danks has thrown just 84 pitches working in the seventh inning. Activity in their pen. Their pen's been pretty good lately. It has been. It was the Cardinals, but got to get the offense going. Pitch to Hayward. Hit hard to right field. Back goes Garcia, and it stays in the ballpark. Didn't quite hit that on the screws, but a good swing. Thanks, breathes a sigh of relief. Saturday, August 1st, 12,000 kids 15 and under entering with a ticket receive their very own limited edition mini Build a Bear Workshop Bear wearing a Saturday alternate jersey. It's also photo day. Fans can go on the field before the game for up close photos of players and coaches. Field access is on a first come, first serve basis. So get there early. Info Cardinals.com slash promotions. Long out for Hayward brings in Yadier Molina's one for two. Used to have a lot of fun on photo day. Used to give us like an instamatic. There's another something you'd have to explain to our oh, young viewers. What is that? <laughs> a three dollar camera that we thought, oh man, we're then there was Polaroid cameras one time. Now I'm picturing you being at a photo day with a guy with the black sheet over his head with a little uh, with a little light bulb that would go off and kind of like the Civil War photo. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know. Flash. Base hit for Molina. Not even with two hits. Always. Oh, like it might have broken his bat. We'll see where. Oh, a hanging breaking ball, and he got up on top of it. Hey, this is the start. So Banks went six shot on innings last time out. And they got the bullpen going for them. They know that they've got to keep an eye on him. They take advantage of a tiring starter. Pitch to Carpenter. High ball to center. Right center, that is. Eaton has it. Two outs. And Ventura didn't like that. So look at the glove. They wanted it down, and it's right over the middle, but pops it up. Ventura sees a long fly ball to right, a base hit to left, and a pitch that was hittable that Carpenter drove in the center. And Ventura, before things get worse, says, Mr. Danks, you did a nice job. Get your round of applause. Take a shower. We'll let the bullpen do the rest. A right hander to face Mark Reynolds. Our Chevy called to the bullpen.
in the White Sox game two of a short two game series and pitching's been the story. White Sox finally get to Lance Lynn in the bottom of the sixth inning. He only gave up five hits, struck out eight in this game. Steven Piscotti picks up another hit today, but Danks been very, very good. Abreu with the base hit to get the White Sox on the board. Jake Patrichka, Cardinals saw him now in St. Louis, and this guy throws very, very hard. Also gets a lot of ground balls, so that sinker is his prominent pitch. Sinkers don't uh, usually leave the ballpark. That's what Mark Reynolds is known for. Well, he's allowed just five home runs since 2013. But you never know. You never know is right. First pitch, hard sinker at 93. When you think about a sinker ball pitcher, you normally think 86 to yes. 90, but not not in this case. This is a hard sinker. It's a hard sinker. We've seen some guys today that go harder than that in sinking action. Try to explain it to people what it's like to to catch. Play, just play catch with somebody oh. with a with a heavy ball. Is what we call it a heavy ball. Feels like you're playing catch with a shot put. Other guys you feel like even though they threw hard, you could just kind of pick right. it right yeah, out of the air. Couldn't bother you at all, but then there's guys that you're just hand hurts. Reynolds certainly capable of tying this game. Count now in his favor, three and one. Cardinals have Dan Johnson, the only left handed bat on their bench. Pete Cosma, Tony Cruz, and Peter Borges on the right side. Three one pitch. A little bit low. Kind of not sure about that one. Reynolds wasn't sure. Late call by Ripperger, but. Cardinals get another base runner. Was this a strike or not? I looked awfully close, and there you see the bot. The bot just fall out of it. Good call. Yep, very good call. And you don't want to hang around the batter's box and make an umpire think you thought it was a strike. Right. And, and yet they get upset when you do <laughs> go to a first base. Again, he got it right. And that warrants a visit from Don Cooper, the pitching coach. I wonder a little bit uh, the psychology right there. Of Preach Scott. And you wonder if it, does he get upset after he walks, buddy, or something happens? Two outs. Yeah, you just you think you're better than guy. You just go right after the next man. But the next man is a guy that they may not know very well, and he may want to make sure that Patrichka has a good understanding of the capability of Steven Piscotti. Okay, we'll take that. But don't you always feel that doesn't matter what the hitter, good, bad, or indifferent. I know what my strengths are, and I'm going to go with my strength, even if. It works to his strength. 100% agree. And you got a guy that's got a dominant sinker. <laughs> what else is he going to throw? Sinker. That's true. Not like he's going to be doing something different to yeah. Stephen Piscott. You can't, you know, just hear sky reports and you say, "Oh, a good fastball hitter." I say, well, what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, <laughs> walk him. I want to say, can he hit a great fastball? Used to say, is you talking about this, he could hit Randy Jones's fastball? Or is he going to hit my fastball? 0 oh 2 on Piscotti. Two runners aboard for the Cardinals. Looking to get on the board for the first time here in the seventh inning. 0 oh 2.
Molina, the runner at second. It's the second time this game he's been out there. Reynolds, the runner at first. Piscotti. Pop up on the right side. Abreu has it. Patrichka gets out of the seventh. Time to stretch here in the Windy City. Just like the pros, 12,000 kids ages 15 and younger entering with a ticket will receive a kids alternative Colton Long jersey, courtesy of Powerade and Shop and Save. Tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. Cardinals looking for offense here tonight. Only managed six hits, haven't scored. Lance Lynn gives way to our Chevy call to the bullpen and Miguel Sokolovich. Sokolovich appearing for the 18th time. You see the good ERA. Opponents were just bagged 203 against him. And we've talked about the great Cardinal scouting system, farm system. 15 guys have come up from Triple A. But think about the scouts that go out and find a guy like Sokolovich, six year minor league free agent. Marcus Hatman. Guys that have come up and contributed. Change of scene to scenery. They get an opportunity in a new organization. All of a sudden, they impressed uh, Mike Matheny, Derek Wolverquist in spring training. He's done a nice job up here in the big leagues. Ready for his first pitch, just a bit outside to Alexi Ramirez. And what you're saying about scouts out, I can't, I couldn't agree more with the value of a scout being able to figure out something. That will make a player valuable. Think about the trading deadline emerging. And you know, what a scout a scout doesn't do is just kind of look at the numbers and say, hey, the guy's hitting 240. You know, anybody can do that. That that's easy to right. kind of look at the guy's numbers. You can crunch his numbers, you can evaluate them, you can go through all kinds of metrics. You know, anybody with a calculator can do that. But what you can't do is see that the player has made an adjustment. Maybe he's turning on a pitch he wasn't. Maybe you see value going forward. You see a guy that maybe is working harder. I mean, there's so much of the kind of human factor that the player is able to adjust to that I think makes these guys incredibly valuable. Well, and also, you have to project, right? What's going to be five years from now? You take a high school kid, and you know, five six years, where you're going to be? That was Jim Henry, you know, the former general manager of the, uh, the Cubs. Who was Alan Bennis's uh, coach at, at Crichton? Crichton. And good guy. I talked to him a little oh, bit yeah, in the lunchroom. Really enjoy him. 
you know what I miss is the old, old stouts. They've all died off. They were just absolute characters. I'll say. And I mean, boy, do they have some stories and just. Uh, Half of them were true. Oh. <laughs> we can't tell you the good ones, <laughs> but they were just classic. Eddie Lyons was one of my favorite. He was a cardinal, but at the end of his time, he was uh, working for the Cubs. But you know, a cell phone was foreign to this to Eddie. So when they had to come in, everybody was doing reports on computers. He they just let him dictate it to a secretary. The key value they bring is just their understanding of athletes and what makes them tick and what makes them get better and what makes them get worse and, and seeing potential in somebody that again it's it's not going to show with the number. Yeah, and, and, and you know they, you know everybody should be pretty pretty uh, sound and correct with their number one trip picks. But sure. When you look at a. A Mike Piazza was a 62nd rounder. You know, Keith Hernandez was like th late 30s or 40s. Segrist was a 41st pick. Don't even have that round. Up the middle, off the glove of Long. Would not have been able to make a play anyway. So a leadoff hit for Alexi Ramirez. That's his first hit of the night. Ricky, I'm sure there was somebody that I used to always say that there's somebody in the minor leagues that helps get you the big leagues that likes you more than the guys that dislike you. Absolutely. Red King was a guy that put his reputation and his neck in a noose for me. And we'll never forget those guys. Just making a judgment. They see something that maybe others don't. Swing and a miss by Flowers. So again, as that relates to the potential trade or the potential trade that could happen for the Cardinals or anybody else leading up to the trade deadline, you look at a player like Adam Lind or Adam LaRoche or some of the other names that are out there that people are interested in, and you say, are they on the verge of breaking out or are they kind of plateaued or what do you see in them and you know do they seem like they're worn out at this stage of the year or are they just getting ready to kind of come into it all that's kind of subjective well and, and I'm, you know, we're sitting here thinking and everybody would say okay how do you help the Cardinals I mean, do you have to go get a left hand hitting first baseman do you have to go get more relief pitching another starter all these different things and yet, you also have to worry about this is a really good chemistry with this ball club. Right yeah. Now. And you got Matt Holiday back. You know, he's trying to find his time and stuff, but that's like you could not acquire a bigger player, you know, at the trade deadline than what you just got taking Holiday off the disabled list. Is there a better relief option out there than Walden or Belial? You know these guys are getting close. You know Mitch Harris is on a, a rehab assignment. You know then you then you've got uh, you know, Jaime Garcia, Marco Gonzalez. So there are you got to do the internal options first. Swing and a miss. Good pitch there by Sokolovich. and he strikes out Tyler Flowers. Doesn't quite look like the Hall of Famer. Future Hall of Famer we saw in St. Louis. That's three strikeouts tonight, very late on that delivery. Ninth strikeout of the night for the White Sox, but Robin Ventura's club currently owning a 2 0 lead as they hit here in the seventh inning. And now you think about clubs that will actually want to break up bad chemistry. But I think your point's well taken about being careful about upsetting good chemistry, but yeah. you probably prefer a third option, which would be to add to already good <laughs> chemistry. You think about the Cardinals getting over the years players like Cesar Cedeno and Dan Dreesen 
and Larry Walker and Will Clark that have been yep. very positive additions and they fit right in and they've helped and they, and they like I said were difference makers at the time all those guys. Good change up signature pitch for Sokolovich. Yeah, he's got a very good change up. I like his slider also. And then he has good, usually good enough command where he can spot his fastball to make it three effective pitches. We've all been on clubs too where every the team's clamoring for a trade and then they trade somebody who said, well, we didn't want him to get traded. <laughs> right. Sanchez has two hits here tonight. They've been batting 193. Ramirez runs very well. And there he goes. Change up, swing and a miss, throw to second into center field. Richard gets on it quickly to keep Ramirez from advancing from second to third. Peralta was late in covering. Yachty just, you know, you throw, the, the rule of thumb is, is you throw it where you're supposed to throw it, right over the bat. And you see Johnny late in covering, but one of the few times, and, and really, Sokolovic should have stepped off because it was a moving start for Alexi. He dancing was kind of kept dancing, and, but he was kind of fidgety going there, and so he should have stepped off at the very least. In the right center field, over comes Gritchick. He's got it. And shows off his arm one more time. Cut off by Peralta. Two outs here in the White Sox seven. Saw something. Right there, that we don't see very often. They, for some reason, pitchers don't back up bases. And Sokolovic did. I've asked around, I've actually asked around a little bit people that are coaching still currently, different teams, friends of mine in other places, and Cardinal people too. I said, Is there something different? <laughs> Is there a reason why pitchers aren't backing up like they used to? Maybe there's a maybe there's a theory that I haven't heard. And the theory is, no, they're just not doing it. <laughs> so. And then you, at the end of my career when I was in Atlanta, you know, I had a lot of experience throwing the pitch and backing up third. But you know, what's the difference between a runner not running a ball out and a pitcher not backing up third? Exactly. And a lot of times it's cost guys, ball games. And it's just simple. Just back up the play. I think the average fan because the player hits the ball will notice when a runner doesn't run down to first base. But you might not notice when the pitcher isn't where he's supposed to be. But in my mind it's just as bad. I agree. Sokolovic. Good change up there to eat and fouls it at the plate. See if he can put. Eaton away. One for two with a walk. As he hits for the fourth time here tonight. Been on base five times in this short two game series. There's the Cardinals defense. Again, Eaton has some power. Don't disregard that. One, two. You see the nine on the right shoulder sleeve. There the in honor of Minnie Minosa. Mm -hmm. Did you know Minnie? I did. Oh, yes, what, very a, much what, so. a, what a wonderful guy. We lost a special one there. Well, the White Sox in my year here in Chicago on the south side, they didn't have as many Lou Brocks and Bob Gibsons and all that spring training and around the clubhouse, but Minnie Minoso was always around, always smiling. And he was the key ambassador for Jerry Reinsdorf and his White Sox organization. What was he played in six generations, uh, six decades? decades. Yes. And 
tried to get him in seventh. But uh, they wouldn't let him. What a character. Oh, very, very nice man. And as you said, a great ambassador not only for the game but for the White Sox. Cardinals will take on the Kansas City Royals tomorrow in the makeup game that we talked about last interleague game of the season for the Cardinals. 2 2 pitch, swing and a miss. Gets him with the changeup. Eaton strikes out. Two in the inning for Sokolovic. On Fox Sports Midwest. Let's go to Pat Paris. He's in our studio and he has a Bomberito sports update. Pat? Thanks, Pat. Looking forward to the postgame show. Brad Thompson alongside with Pat Paris today. And now we woke up today to the news in Chicago not being so much about the White Sox and the Cardinals, but the big story in town here is the Cubs young catcher that's been called to the big leagues who's really having a terrific start. Kyle Schwarber. He's hit 400 plus, has three home runs in his first week or so in the big leagues. Well, you know, he hit. Uh, Game tying home run in the ninth inning yesterday and then won it, I believe, in the 13th with a solo shot. He came up earlier in the season you know, for like a. Might have been when uh, Ross was had the concussion seven days and hit 400 then. They sent him down to the dismay of so many, but uh, he's come back up now that uh, Montero's on the disabled list. This is Zach Duke. Hard hit ground ball, but right at the second baseman. Sanchez throws out his counterpart, Colton Long, one out in the eighth. You mentioned the White Sox bullpen has been really good. The best bullpen ERA in the last two weeks in all of baseball. Now, not a lot of games there because you got the All Star break, but you know, bullpens, as, as we've talked about Al so often, can get on a roll collectively. And Right now, you'd say the White Sox have it working. And Zach Duke's a prime example. You look at his 0 0.63 ERA and a 130 opponents average over the last 16 appearances. He's 32 years of age now. Remember, he started with the with the Pirates, started for many years, moved to the bullpen, and has become a very effective lefty. 
Lefties are hitting 200 against him. Right handed batter is just 231. And Randall Gritchick is 0 for his last 11. And base hit. There goes that 0 for 11. That's why I mentioned. Good thinking. Start, you know, streaks follow streaks. Wanted it down, and it was not so much down, but away. They're not going to let him face Matt Holiday, are they? Somehow, I don't think so. Five flowers went out there, probably let their bullpen get going. Long conversation. Dave Robertson looks like the closer is up in the bullpen. Not quite ready for the closer yet, though. Perhaps is Robin Ventura. Umpire breaks up that conversation. Well, we got the hit. Now we need the blast. Look at the numbers against Duke. Wow, interesting. They're allowing Zach Duke to face Matt Holiday with those numbers. Very, very interesting. Duke delivers. Swing and a miss by Holiday. So good numbers against Zach Duke. The potential tying run at the plate. Eighth inning. It's a lot of confidence they're showing in Zach Duke. Numbers have been good of late. He's recorded a 137 ERA in 19 games here at U.S. Cellular Field. One strike pitch is a little bit low, one and one. Well, from the Cardinals' perspective, you got to at least say this: I like this opportunity. Yes. Might not work. But boy, you like the matchup. Peralta would bat next. 1 1. Swing and a miss. And on the hands of Holiday. Wheels turning. Two managers in their fourth season. As a manager in the big leagues, Thini and Robin Ventura. Check swing. He did he go? Asking for appeal. And of course, Brian Lenora, the crew chief. Lenora wasn't going to give an answer till he checked on the potential throw to first base. He was on the move, wanting to be in the right position before he let him know he didn't think he went. Maybe a break there. I thought it was. Yeah. I thought it was very close to a swing by Matt Holiday. Here's the defense again, pinching in the gaps, giving the lines in left and in right to Matt Holiday. Two and two. A lot of balls up the middle too. Did that hit, hit it? it? It sure did. All right. Duke tried to get. Especially nasty on that breaking ball and hits Matt Holiday. And now the potential go ahead run at the plate in Johnny Peralta. Pete Cosma is going to run for Holiday, which is a good move. And yeah. there's ball hitting the back foot of Holiday. So, yeah, I mean, you're at this stage right now, you need that speed there. Oh, yeah. But Peralta is a 300 hitter off of Duke. And then, you know, who's on deck is. Is Jason Hayward who hit 714 off of Duke? Well, the numbers certainly the go in the Cardinals way. They haven't scored yet, but here's the opportunity here in the eighth inning. Ground ball foul. This opportunity may be better than what you see in the ninth inning. Right. So take advantage right here. Well, and how many times do we see a game? The game was really on the line when you're talking about your seventh and eighth inning pitchers, and then a closer would come in in the ninth to start a ninth inning with the 
back end or the bottom of the order, or sometimes a three run lead. And he gets a save. But here's the game right here. Johnny Peralta, 21 doubles, 107 hits. He represents the go ahead run at the plate. Tying run is at first base in Cosma. Richick has a lead at second. And the 1 1. Swung on and missed. 1 and 2. We talked about Johnny Peralta tied for first in the major leagues with his 12 game winning RBIs. But this stat is very important. He's batting 375, first in the major leagues in the seventh inning or later. With 19 RBIs. Will he come through here? The pitch. Rounded foul past Okendo, and that'll wake him up. Jose saying, I'm glad my knee feels better. <laughs> I can move. He's in such great shape right now. Really working hard. Back to running again. Way to go. He had to run away from that one. The one two from Duke. Swung on and missed. He gets Peralta. Big strikeout. Big moment in this game, perhaps. Well, not over. There's two strikes in here. You see, you get the strikeout. But Hayward, 7 14 average. 5 for 7 in facing Zach Duke. Tells me that Robin Ventura is at the point right now, despite the numbers, that he believes more in Zach Duke than he does in the other right handers, other than David Robertson, will be the ninth. Exactly. Albers, Putnam, Webb also out there from the right side, but he stays with Duke. He now has a left hander in Hayward, ball one. Hayward 0 for 3. Certainly very capable. Of pushing this rally forward. The pitch. A little bit low. Two and up. Garcia is almost on the warning track in right field. And I'm not kidding. Look how deep he is. 2 0. Breaking pitch for a strike. Osma trying to get a big lead off of first. 2 1 pitch is grounded, just foul. But they're going to say that's catcher's interference. All right. It seemed like an odd swing from Jason Hayward, and his bat must have caught the glove of the catcher, Tyler Flowers. We haven't seen that. I haven't seen it all year. Not this year. And now, Robin Ventura will make the pitching change and go to his closer for. The four out save. What a break for the Cardinals. Catcher's interference allows Hayward to go to first. Here's the swing and the late swing, and he hits the glove of Flowers, who has the responsibility to keep his hand back away from that swing. So the Cardinals with the bases loaded here in the eighth inning. Ventura goes to the bullpen. It'll be Molina. Game on the line when we come back.
Been a good ball game here at U.S. Cellular Field. 2-0 White Sox. We are in the top of the eighth inning. The Cardinals have mounted a threat here against Zach Duke. And the White Sox bullpen. And the last base runner reaches on this catcher's interference. You see Jason Hayward hitting the glove of the catcher, Tyler Flowers. So that's an error on Flowers. Loads the bases. Our Chevy call to the bullpen is David Robertson. 20 out of 24 save opportunities. Very, very tough. One of the best things about him from a Robin Ventura in the White Sox standpoint is first batter average 083. Now that's important with two outs and bases loaded. Just a one ERA here at home. And the pitch to Molina inside for a ball. Yadi is one for one off of this closer. And he has a couple hits in this game. Yadi does not strike out a lot. Robertson is a strikeout machine. And the pitch. Swing and a miss by Yachty. Big cut there. Cardinal fans trying to have the Yachty chant. Uh, and the White Sox trying to drown him out. And a little upset about it. Grichik singled with one out. Holiday was hit by a pitch. Catcher's interference has loaded the bases for Molina. Tying run at second base. Robertson the closer. About the outfield arms, they got a lot of assists out there. Uh, with Cosma pinch running for Holiday, that could be big on a base hit to the outfield. Very good speed on the base pass for St. Louis. The 2-1. 2 and 2. How about the contrast from work? The right fielder Garcia is playing now with Yachty versus where he was with earlier. He's back all the way up. He's back against the screen. Out there well. The 2-2. Two -two. A stand up triple by Yachty. But they had the right fielder so shallow with that ball slicing down the right field corner, it got all the way to the wall. And that allowed the bases clearing triple by Yachty or Molina. I'm talking about. He's one of the best in the American League of retiring the first batter. Well, that's what can happen if you bring in guys on base and relievers don't get that first out. Good pitch down away, just a defensive swing, and you can see how Garcia had to just start running back into the corner. He was too shallow when right. Big moment for the Cardinals and Yadier Molina, third hit of the night. Yachty had three hits last night. Three two St. Louis. Robertson very tough on left handed batters also. Six best average in Major League Baseball lefties are just batting 176 against him. Not since 2011. Carpenter strikes out, but the damage done. Yachty into the corner. Cardinals take the lead.
you by Budweiser. Make a plan to make it home. And by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Yadier Molina is given the Cardinal fans on hand here at U.S. Cellular a big thrill in the eighth inning. His two out, three run triple has given the Cardinals the lead. And now the wheels keep turning for Mike Matheny and Robin Ventura. And our Chevy call to the bullpen is Sam Tuivalala. Ninth appearance. You see, he's 0 1 on the year, but since he's come up, he's inherited much bigger situations. We recalled on July 11th from Memphis, where he's 3 0, 1.78 ERA, 12 for 12 in save opportunities, and Pacific Coast League All Star. Opponents are batting just 103 against Tui Valala. And facing a very, very difficult part of the order. Saladino, the hottest White Sox, followed by Abreu and Cabrera, their best hitters. Two one, broken bat, handled by Wong. Now quickly a game can turn. Tim Hayes with a nice interview with Tui Valala today, and well spoken. You can tell that he is relishing his time here in the big leagues, and you know feels so much more comfortable. Coming up late last year, being around the guys in spring training, second trip up to St. Louis this year, and now showing the confidence that he feels like he belongs here and that he can compete here. Making that statement, he wants to stay here. Not just be here. Right. That's what happens a lot of time to come up the first time. We're thrilled, but then we go. I want to stay. It's so good. You get a taste of it. Pretty nice life being a big leaguer. Ricky, I think that's just so important. When kids go to spring training and they get invited to the big league camp, get a taste of it, to get to know the players. Then they aren't quite as in awe of them. Right. One thing about Tui Bolano, got Yachty. But the one thing that, you know, is very impressive to me and really the veteran guys respect, you see the foul tip right there, is that he asked a lot of questions. Yeah. When guys come up here and they don't ask questions, they're missing a great opportunity to learn. I've heard guys say, you know, well, I don't want to ask a stupid question. Well, you're being stupid if you want to know something and you don't ask it. It's like Bob Gibson move rock. You know, I mean they they've got all kinds of answers and different things, but you gotta go to it. You gotta ask them. And then they'll open the vault. Deep, the outfielders are playing. They want a ball over their head. It stays in the park. You have a willing student, and the teacher shows up. Tuivalala is learning. He's learning in the eighth inning of a one-run game. The one-two. Hard hit, center field, base hit. Playing very deep was Grichik gets it in quickly as Abreu rounds first base hard. So the potential tying run is now aboard for the White Sox with Cabrera coming to the plate. Cabrera switch hitter. Much better from the left side. But then we got the right handers falling. Seeker 
first in the Cardinal bullpen. Seven with that delivery. Guess Segrist is up for LaRoche, perhaps. Although with Segrist, as you mentioned yesterday, so to see him right hand. In some ways, that is absolutely true. Late swing and a foul back. Good fastball. So he's got a good fastball, but remember he's a shortstop converted in 2012 to pitching, so he's learned very quickly. And this is the one way to learn is to be on that mound. But he's come up with a little cutter, and that's why he's going to be successful. One and two. To Ivalala facing Cabrera in the eighth. Cardinals could not get runs for their starter, Lance Lynn. They did pick up three for Miguel Sokolovich in the top half of the eight. The pitch. Fouled off. Strikes out Melky Cabrera. 97 down in the zone. Really good hitter and weak swing. But that, you know, he was just overmatched. Emer emer emergency hack. Yeah, there. emergency hack. Just got to make it look good. Right. And then you look at the video, you know, you have to do that. <laughs> Visael Garcia. Strike one. He has struck out three times. This crowd here has been stunned a bit by what happened in the top of the eighth inning. Cardinal fans started cheering. They started reacting. And now they're pensive. City defeats Pittsburgh five to one. Looping liner over the head of Colton Wong in the right field. The Braille's gonna make it to third. Hayward gets it in. So Garcia just puts his bat on the ball and extends the inning for Adam LaRoche. And Matheny pops out of the Cardinals dugout. He has Segrist ready. Takes the ball from Tui Valala. Never easy in the eighth inning and beyond.
any accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Very, very busy. Left handed pitcher out of the Cardinals bullpen, Kevin, Kevin Segrist. He is our Chevy called to the bullpen. He's either tied or has the most appearances in the National League tonight with his 49th game. So LaRoche will get a chance to face hard throwing Seekers. Game on the line. And the first pitch is a strike at 93. You say that he's warming up for LaRoche, but many times you wish they would turn around and put a right handed pinch hitter in there. The lefties are batting 327. 327 off of Seekers, right handers 156. Ball fouled off. He is ahead of it. Roach with 252 home runs. It's uh, fifth highest among left handed hitters active. And a lot of strikeouts, too. The 0 2. Swing! He strikes out LaRoche. The booze rain down on the Chicago White Sox offense. Big pitch for Kevin Secret. Have come back in this game trying to win this series. The Cardinals are 19 7 and 4 in series this year. And just a short two game set. 1 8 to 5 last night and are trying to pick up a comeback victory here tonight facing Robertson in the ninth. He's the one that gave up that two out. Three run triple to Yadier Molina. Reynolds, Piscotti, and Wong in the top of the ninth. An insurance run would be nice. Rick, I think yeah, Cardinals hold on and win this ball game. The White Sox will now understand why the Cardinals have the best record. They probably didn't appreciate the strength of this team. And they took two two games from them. And they, Two game series in St. Louis. They're not that tough. 
shows what Chris Sale can make you think about a club. Yeah, that's true. The White Sox had great hopes coming into the season. Watch out. Sometimes the ugly truth is you got to realize that they're not as good or not the contenders. You see this ball right underneath the elbow. Look at those elbows. Saw this, the cutter spin and it didn't cut. Yeah. Almost walked right into it. Think about the importance in that eighth inning, Al, of the catcher's interference. Yes, extended it. There you see the numbers off of Robertson. You can understand why he was throwing that ball up and in. Full count. And a base runner for the Cardinals. Hoping to get that insurance run here at the top of the ninth against the closer, David Robertson. Steven Piscotti has probably known the signs for about 24 hours. But being a Stanford grad, I'm sure he's got that locked in. Probably don't have to tell him too many things twice. Would, uh, for the sake of the, the Harvard of the West. That ball hit Mark Reynolds in the back of the leg. If it hadn't hit him, that ball might have gone into right field. Brayu didn't much get much of a glove on that. Let's look at it again. He didn't get any glove on it. Boy, that's a break for the White Sox, isn't it? Yes. If it could have gotten up and advanced. Or if it didn't hit him and it went into right field corner. Right. No, I mean, but, well, that's true. He wouldn't be obligated. Round ball could be two. Ramirez takes it himself. Piscotti does run well, but can't beat that one out. 6 3 double play erases Mark Reynolds. And kind of wondered what he would have thought. Try to get him in a scoring position with a bunt, but then swing away. Got at 250. Two for eight. That ball hit the ankle of Mark Reynolds. First, I thought it hit him in the back of the leg, but the second view, and if, you know, if it hits a bone just sure. just right on your ankle, I mean, that's going to create a bruise, perhaps. Greg Houck working on him. Colton Wong. Cosma stays in the game as the DH. She's got Dan Johnson that can play first. Went to the count on Colton Wong. Two outs in the Cardinals ninth. Three runs on seven hits for St. Louis. Two runs, eight hits for the White Sox. Breaking pitch, swung on and missed. Wong retired. Trevor Rosenthal getting loose. Looking for another save.
first three contests. And the home team with runners in scoring position, three for 30, much better on the road team. Runs better and late runs even more significant. The White Sox picked up all the runs in St. Louis that came late. The Cardinals have done it here tonight. And they're gonna rely on Trevor Rosenthal, our Chevy call to the bullpen. To try to pick up Al, his 29th save of the season. That's right. Rosie. And his first appearance in the second half last night. I talked to him today about how he'd feel when he said it felt really good. So hopefully that'll carry over. Pick up that 29th save. Big win for the Cardinals. Remember they do. It's an open day on the schedule, but it's the makeup game against the Kansas City Royals and tomorrow. And it is a 6:15 game, not 7:15. It's an hour earlier. First pitch goes back to the backstop from Trevor Rosenthal. This is Trevor's 44th appearance. It's 49 by Segrist. Main is, is right up there. With, he's got 47 appearances. Ground ball to short. Peralta has it. Low throw and Mark Reynolds picks it out of the dirt. Out number one here in the ninth inning. Pump it up. <laughs> Pump it up. Rosie right here, trying to get seven, eight, nine in the order. Reynolds went out to play first base. Mike Matheny came out onto the field to ask him if he was okay to play defensively. Made a nice play there on that low throw. Shot the pinch hitter. Got a base hit last night. It's a pinch hitter. Thirteen of his last twenty-six games, he's five for twenty as a pinch hitter. Ground ball right side. Reynolds, the ball finds you, and then they make you run. I guess that ankle's okay. And hand to the training staff. Seven. Rosie just have a real quick and efficient inning. Five pitches. Cardinals with a five and a half game lead as the Pirates have lost, hoping to extend that. The White Sox are trying to stand in the way of that. The Cubs nine games behind at the St. Louis. It's the White Sox down to their last out. Pirates. Had those emotional wins at the end of the second half against the Cardinals, but to start after the All Star break, one and five. They were swept by Milwaukee and then won, a, won one of the three games in Kansas City. Player of the game brought to you by Budweiser is, of course, Yadier Molina. Three for four here tonight is triple in the eighth inning. Drove in three. Rosenthal trying to close it out. Two and one. Fans on their feet here at U.S. Cellular. They have enjoyed a whale of a ball game. Swing and a miss. Rosenthal closes it out. And the Cardinals win both games of the series here in Chicago. Outstanding job, good pitching. Lance Lynn 
was good in his start. The bullpen was great. Finished off with a 29th save by Rosenthal. The clutch hitting of Yadier Molina. And another victory for the best record in baseball. Plenty of good news here from Chicago. We'll talk about it on the postgame show. Coming up next on Fox Sports Midwest.